fantastic. I mean, in the book, obviously, you, you cover everything from that evolutionary aspect, the whole story behind, you know, how we got into this low salt area and all the, the functions of salt. And of course, you come full circle and, and talk about the types of salt. Can you give us a, a general overview of, you know, you know, what is table salt and, of course, some of the other salts that are commonly used, like your Celtic salt and Himalayan sea salt? Yeah, that's a great question. It's funny thinking back on it before I researched salt, how little I knew about just table salt in general. And so table salt is obviously getting table salt is better than getting no salt. But when I started learning that salt isn't actually supposed to be that white, that table salt is actually bleached white and that it's susceptible to a very high heat and they have anti-caking agents in table salt, like normal Morton table salt. Uh, they also put sugar in in table salt, dextrose. And so when I started learning that, I was like, okay, well, geez, I need to really understand what are some of the healthy natural salts because For sure. table salt is just, you know, this completely processed salt. And again, I will say that getting table salt is much better than not getting enough. But you can certainly from my book get grab and I have some really good suggestions on what are some of the really good salts. But I have a table that breaks down some of the nutrients and some of the more common salts. So that Celtic salt um, is your highest salt in magnesium. Uh, Himalayan pink salt has the highest amount of potassium. And the Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N-D, real salt, is my favorite salt. And it's from an ancient dried up ocean bed. And so it doesn't have the pollution from modern day uh, oceans. And it doesn't have the microplastics that you might find in sea salts for modern day oceans. So that's one reason why I really like Redmond real salt. But I also love it because it appears to have really good amounts of iodine. So in my table, I kind of show how you can get basically 178 micrograms of iodine per a normal salt intake if all of your salt intake comes from Redmond real salt. So if, if your diet is kind of low on iodine, which a lot of people actually aren't getting enough iodine in their diet, then Redmond real salt might be a good uh, salt to you. So there's this, there's a salt mixology where you can kind of mix and match the different salts depending on your diet in which some people have a diet low in magnesium and may want more of the Celtic salt. And some people have a diet that's low in iodine and may want to reach for the Redmond real salt. So I kind of give, um, po uh, positives and negatives to some of the more common salts. And I have that really nice nutrient comparison table in the book. Yeah, I thought that was fantastic. Really blew me away the different forms of salt and other ones that are richer in calcium and iron. So yeah, incredible, incredible um, summary of all that information. Um, and something else that you touched on in your book, which you know surprised me, was low salt diets and the impact on things like libido and fertility. Can you give folks an idea of what's going on there? Yeah, that is probably the most um, almost like scary side effect of low salt. And that back in the 1950s, there was a study published in the Lancet, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals even today, they looked at over 2,000 pregnant women. And what they found was is that a low cell diet doubled miscarriages. It tripled perinatal death. It also tripled premature births. It increased preeclampsia. Like the one thing that we think salt causes high blood pressure in pregnant women, it actually fixes. So they were giving these women 20 grams of salt up to 300 grams of salt, which I wouldn't recommend, but that's what they did with some of these really bad preeclamptic women, completely treated their preeclampsia. And that's because pregnancy is a low blood volume state because the, some of the blood is being shunted to the baby. And the fertility aspect, it's kind of interesting that the ancient Greeks and Romans knew this because Aphrodite, who is the goddess of love in Greek mythology is said to be born from the salty sea and basically she gets her name derived from the well-known benefits of salt on fertility and so even Aristotle knew that animals were more eager to mate they would populate more if they consumed ample amounts of salt and it's been proven in clinical studies that low salt diets in men will actually increase the risk of erectile dysfunction so there's actually really good evidence that salt improves fertility in both men and women. I mean, I think that's great news for 
for, for everyone, but it's a great way to increase compliance as well for your, for your patients is because I think most people <laughs> and clients think that's an easy, um, an easy motivator for most people. Now, if we shift gears a little bit here, James, you could tell us perhaps a little bit about your, you know, your morning routine. Are you, uh, you know, are you a coffee drinker? Do you get most of your work done in the morning? How does that shake out in terms of, uh, you know, even in your preparation for the book and just day to day? Yeah. Um, definitely a coffee drinker. And when I started learning how much salt we lose in coffee, I was actually pretty blown away. So if you, if we consume just four cups of coffee, we can lose up to an entire teaspoon of salt and we're told to eat less than that. So you can see how 50% of Americans can potentially easily be deficient in salt if they're only consuming a teaspoon yet they're consuming four cups of coffee in a day because it's basically wiping that completely out. So what I like to do is I add a little bit of mineral salt to my coffee. That'll actually cut some of the bitterness out, and I don't have to use as much heavy cream, so that reduces my fat bombs in the morning. Nice. So I normally, yeah, that's that's a. Honestly, when I was going low carb, that was one of my downfalls. Was was I was doing too many fat bombs, and so I started adding salt, and that started kind of allowing me to use less cream in my coffee. Terrific. So I'll have. Yeah, so I'll have about three cups of coffee in the morning. I'll have three pastured eggs. I'll put a good amount of Redmond Real Salt on there, probably maybe a fourth of a teaspoon with some pepper. Might have a piece of Ezekiel bread dipped in olive oil with a little bit of salt, sea salt. And then what I'll do for lunch, normally I have um, a, like a Chipotle bowl. So I'll have beans, tons of veggies like uh, peppers and onions, um, corn, um, I'll have also pork and chicken and, um, uh, the salsa I'll grab that as well. And so, and then for dinner, what I normally do is I'll cook just some like uh, free range pork chops. I'll salt both sides really nice. And, and honestly, salt just adds a lot more than flavor to the, to your food. It adds moisture because it, when you cook it, when you cook, like a pork chop that's been salted, it it provides this crust and traps in the moisture. So your your meat is so much more succulent. And what I'll do then is once the pork chops are fully cooked, I'll kind of elevate the plate a little bit and I'll let those salty juices just kind of ooze down, creating like this salty broth. And I'll just put a ton of spinach in that salty broth. So I use salt to eat healthy, bitter foods, high in magnesium and potassium that I never would have consumed without the salt. And I will. T- any parent will tell you, your kids will not eat vegetables or nuts or seeds without salt. It's our gateway to eating healthy. Yeah, that's phenomenal. I mean, it's you're making me hungry just listening to your description <laughs> there. It's uh, but it, like you said, I mean, this is the secret of most chefs, obviously, using salt and using the the liquids and juices of all the meats to help uh, season everything and, and improve the taste. So it's such a such a good insight there. Now, I want to respect your time, uh, James. Here, so last question for you, kind of a thirty thousand foot view here. You know. Why do you do what you do? Why did you get into this line of work and, and with even the book? Yeah, honestly, I've always been very inquisitive, but it really comes from I just want to help people out. And I was, I was in the pharmacy. I was just started out as a pharmacist in the community. And I really understood the power of information when I started researching about the symptoms of sleep apnea. And so one of my patients had just suffered a stroke. She was a single mom. She was really distraught. She was like, James, if I have another stroke, I don't know who's going to take care of my kids. And so I started asking her questions about sleep apnea because I knew that about 90% of people who have a stroke have some type of sleep apnea. So I said, you know, do you feel refreshed in the morning? Do you snore at night? Do you wake up in the middle of the night? Do you have you know headaches in the morning? Yes, yes, yes to all the all the sleep apnea questions. I was like, I honestly think you have sleep apnea. She got tested and she had one of the worst cases of sleep apnea the doctor ever had. And so my knowledge potentially saved this woman's life. And so that's why I do what I do because the research that I do can directly help people out. And, and honestly, there's not a better feeling. So selfishly, I almost do it to get that gratification. Well, that's, that's fantastic, James. I mean, I'm a huge fan of your work. It's uh, incredible stuff. You know, your book, The Salt Fix, um, should be sort of compulsory reading for every doctor, nutritionist, and, and person out there. It's, it's phenomenal, busting so many myths and so many great, uh, you know, tips and guidance for people. So thanks so much for taking the time out today. Where can people pick up the book and where can people keep up with all your fantastic work? 
Yeah, so people can get the book at thesaltfix.com, which is my website, and they can order it off of Amazon. It's in Barnes & Noble nationwide. They can order it off offline for uh, in Walmart or Target. And P- I'm pretty active on Twitter, at Dr. James Dinick, D-I-N-I-C, and I'm also on Facebook, too. 